a senior from Lilburn, Georgia, Lee Goza. Emory University of North Carolina, sophomore from Latham, New York, Sam Perkins. At the guard spots, a junior from Cocoa, Florida, George Thomas. And a freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina, Michael Jordan. At the other guard spot for the Yellow Jackets from Apex, North Carolina, sophomore Anthony Bird. And for North Carolina, senior from the Bronx, New York, Jimmy Black. Georgia Tech is coached by Bobby Crimmins, North Carolina by Dean Smith. Paul Hausman will be the referee, assisted by Joe Forty and Tom Frame. And for North Carolina, they finished on top again, winning both games from Georgia Tech. They had a club at end to the Atlantic Coast Conference. North Carolina's still the Yellow Jackets. Steppy's the man to watch, number 14. Lee goes a very physical on the inside. Tip control by the underdog Yellow Jackets. And we'll see how Georgia Tech can establish here a control game. Interesting that Gozu would get that top on Sam Perkins. That's an excellent time leap by Lee Goza. Half a man defense for North Carolina. They forces the inside. Here goes Thomas driving by. And a great block by Doherty. That saved a basket for North Carolina's defense. Wide open offense, but I think a very good move by Georgia Tech to go ahead and penetrate inside if it's available. And bounce pass by George Thomas. This is Morris Bradford coming across for the right hand. Tipped up by Goza, and it's going to be grabbed by Georgia Tech. Second great play by Goza, that time over Worthy. Right. There's Anthony Bird getting his first start, number 30 for Georgia Tech. He's been great off the bench today, today no doubt. Got Perkins on Bird, a little mismatch right there. North Carolina will put on awesome pressure. Great touch pass to Goza for the layup. What a touch pass that was. I think Georgia Tech surprised North Carolina, Jim, by actively going towards the basket instead of just going in a straight-out stall. Two nothing. Georgia Tech's drawn first blood. North Carolina with the ball for the first time, facing the Yellow Jackets 3-2 zone defense. Their perimeter shooting has been the spot most teams have forced them to go. Michael Jordan, a little penetration. Rebound by Colson. Georgia Tech off to an early quick start here before a normal capacity crowd. All games this tournament will be sold out. Over 15,000. Steppy and now he saw Perkins change his mind, pulls it right back out. Oh, he's a heady player, Bill. So far, Georgia Tech has gotten every loose ball and beat North Carolina for every rebound. Maybe they wanted a little bit more early in the ball game. Two minutes gone by. Georgia Tech has the only two points of the game, the opening game of the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. Three more games coming this afternoon and tonight. You'll see on the ball right here on Metro Sports. Driving Bird. Ball is pulled down by Worthy. People that had the wrong angle there might have thought the ball was in a cylinder, but clearly outside. 2-0. North Carolina will try to tie it again. They're strong on the inside with Perkins and Worthy. Black going to the freshman. There's Jordan hitting. Excellent penetration by North Carolina. They really moved the zone around that time. And Jimmy was anybody going up for that jump shot and giving off at the top. Tied at two. North Carolina still a man for man pickup. They'll put on a lot of pressure. Steffi firing under the Groza. No open shot, respecting the blocking ability of Worthy. Pulls it back outside. Georgia Tech has not really forced anything as yet. This Sam Perkins is amazing. He's got Steffi now on the switch. Sam can play. He's a very flexible defensive player. To be able to go out and take a guy like Steffi is amazing. Goza driving for a layup. Georgia Tech back in the lead. Dean Smith just sitting down, relaxing over there. Bobby Crimmins up, running up and down the court. Bill, I'm not so sure that was a switch. They may have Perkins on uh, Steppy straight up. Uh, yeah, I think that they do. And what I'm saying is that it's amazing a guy that could be that flexible at his size. Jump ball. There's Sam Perkins, six foot nine, sophomore from Latham, New York. And that old uh, subway still open for North Carolina. Bobby Crimmins, who came from the New York area himself. Out of the streets of the Bronx. He's getting like his old coach, Frank McGuire, more distinguished every day, isn't he? Here's Perkins down inside. And I said Georgia Tech's out scrapping North Carolina early, and I believe they are. There's four guys around the ball for Georgia Tech, one for Carolina. Perkins did not get blocked off. A great lob on the inside. North Carolina ties it at four all, and we played three minutes and 20 seconds. Jimmy Braddock in the ball game now. Braddock has come on to replace... Uh, 
the rookie as he goes a wide open. Oh, good block. Jump, and they're going to call jump yep. ball. Great block by Worthy. It was an excellent back. The tremendous athletic ability of a Worthy gets to this ball. Look at James Worthy. Sensational block. That'll be Georgia Tech's ball. They call it a jump ball. We've had two jump ball situations so far. 4-4 four, four tie. Georgia Tech surprisingly in the opening four minutes. Staying with North Carolina. And North Nation's Carolina number was, one team. They were on that zone right there and got they away with it. Now was Braddock knocked it away. Jimmy Black on the break. Now North Carolina will try to take the lead. They go to the zone against the inside power of North Carolina. Doherty forcing to get the free throw. Foul on the play by Anthony Bird. Well, a lot of times in regard to Doherty, you just don't realize that Matt Doherty is as big as he is. And he gets inside. He's a good size, almost a power forward type. Put the shot up. That wasn't maybe a good shot from a standpoint of selection, but he knew he'd get fouled, so it was a smart move. Back in comes Michael Jordan, replacing Jimmy Braddock. So Dean Smith obviously just wanted Jordan out for a conference. Doherty at the line for two shots. He's really a little on a tear the last uh, dozen games or so. North Carolina leads for the first time of the game at 5-4. Getting his free throw shooting up around the 80% mark. The guy does an awful lot of good things mentally in the game of basketball as well as having good stats. Brooks Steffi on the rebound for Georgia Tech. 5-4 North Carolina leading for the first time. We have 16 minutes to go in the first half. Jimmy Black tries to draw this charge and Thomas is there. You notice what Black is doing. He's trying to force Thomas down the size. He does not want to play him square up. He wants to make Georgia Tech move that ball past the midcourt area. Also wants to go to his left hand. Five for North Carolina. Steffi gets it back in to Thomas. Back to Brooks. Steffi has yet to take a shot. Now he's, he's the being, Georgia Tech siege gun. He's being hounded by taller people. He's got Worthy on him now and has had Perkins on him before. Georgia Tech wants a timeout with 15 and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Georgia Tech holding its own so far, trailing the Tar Heels by just a point at 5-4. to four. Let's pause for these messages. The broadcast cable cast rights to this game are granted by the Atlantic Coast Conference to Metro Communications Incorporated. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without written consent is prohibited. Announcers are paid and hired by Metro Communications in consultation with the ACC. Awesome pressure by North Carolina. A very dangerous toss-in. You never want to give the guy the ball right in that particular corner because there's no place for him to go, Jim. No room to go in the backcourt, and therefore the only way he can go is front court. He was totally surrounded. Bad toss inbounds. Forced to the turnover. North Carolina gets the ball. A big question has to be, Bill, how long could Georgia Tech fight off this pressure of the North Carolina defenses? Worthy moving in on Goza, trying to establish position, and as everybody around here knows, Goza doesn't give up position often. There goes Jordan backing in. Off balance on a slant. Michael Jordan and North Carolina scored five unanswered points to lead by three. North Carolina picking up a little higher now, going into their trap defense. Great pass. Bird foul by Doherty. Georgia Tech alert so far. Bobby Crimmins probably set up that combination. Excellent pass by Thomas right down through the pipe here. I think he really caught North Carolina by surprise there. An excellent pass inside. This guy is sort of a homecoming. Well, that's Jimmy Black, of course, uh, or Michael Jordan, but Anthony Bird here, North Carolina native from Apex, played at Bavard Junior College. 18 points in the game of Chapel Hill against North Carolina. Getting his fourth start, apparently. Seven to six. Staying in that 2 1 2 zone. North Carolina very content. You're looking at a very polished club here, Jim. They're not in any hurry to get carried away to make many mistakes. Well, the season team here with a young Doherty on the outside. Carolina's big key in their push to try to win a national championship or this tournament for that matter. They've got to get hot from the outside early to establish that perimeter game. 
Absolutely no doubt about the awesome power on the inside. Thomas being double teamed. Step it always has to be another man. Here goes Bradford. He runs into a double team, has to clear it. I'd say for Georgia Tech right now, they've got to figure out a way to free up Brooks Steppy for some jump shots. So far, he hadn't been available. There's a lot broken up by uh, Perkins. Here comes North Carolina after the steal. Tar Heels never were flustered by the early good start by Georgia Tech. Played solid basketball and now the leading by three with the ball. Nine to six. Here goes Jimmy Black, way outside. There's rebound. It's hauled down the inside by Thomas. He's a great rebounding guard. Uh, Gordy reaches in for his second foul. Well, I don't think Thomas realized Doherty was nope. there, and it was very fortunate for him because this could have been a big steal for North Carolina. Here's Thomas. Now, at this point, Perkins goes by. He doesn't realize Doherty's there until it's too late. Too late. But then Doherty picks up the foul on a little touch. Number two on Doherty, 9-6 North Carolina lead. Breaking is Steppy. Now uh, Steppy hands the run right into Perkins again. It's cut off. Brooks Steppy's yet to take a shot. He's the second leading scorer on the ACC with an 18-point average. You can see the, the philosophy by Dean Smith is to put a bigger man on him to prevent him from getting that jump shot that he likes, allow him to penetrate, and then double team just as they did there. Excellent defensive strategy. Right now they have uh, Perkins on Goza and Warren. He's taking over Steppy. There goes Steppy from the outside. Rebound worthy. North Carolina. Quick outlet pass to block. The big guys have scored only two points so far. An inbounds pass lot to Perkins. There it is. Perkins off the hook. Oh, not a good shot by Sam Perkins. Lost the handle. Perkins rolls out. Brooks Steppy gets by Jimmy Black. Here comes Jordan. But Steppy got the lead. Gives Georgia Tech a lot of credit. They are going ahead and taking a break when it's available. Nine to eight. Bobby Cribbins, Yellow Jackets come back within one. 12.45 to go on the half. Look at where that zone is, Jim. Packed way back inside the foul line. Those guys are back inside 12 feet. Perkins, and that may be a push off. That'll be on Sam Perkins. First one on him, the third team foul against North Carolina. Thomas leads all Atlantic Coast Conference guards in rebounding. That means he's beating guys like Hamilton. You can see there is Matt Doherty taking a shot from about 11, 12 feet. The zone was inside that shooting range. Yeah, they really packed in the blue paint. Full court pressure now as Jimmy Braddock has returned to the North Carolina lineup. Here's Worthy coming down in defensive court to pick up Steppy. But just a passive press by him. Steppy got his first two off the defensive play. Georgia Tech can score to regain the lead here. They're down by 9 to 8. A near steal by Worthy. And I thought we'd have a repeat of last year. Worthy came right off to our broadcast booth. Well, fortunately, we didn't have any sodas on no. the... Uh, he would have dunked that one if he had gotten a hold of it. 9-8. North Carolina by one. Big Georgia Tech's ball. North Carolina's been man-to-man -man pressure from the very outset. They're working in the steppy, but there are the two big guys lined up behind him. Worthy and Perkins. There's Jeff Barlow in the ball game. Thomas Feetza goes up. Oh, foul. Goes goes up. Foul. Here comes Buzz Peterson. One point lead by North Carolina. Jeff Barlow of Atlanta. Worthy inside. Worthy. And that's going to be foul. Personal foul blocking on Gozer. Quite a move by Worthy inside, even driving against his own. It's almost taking it down the pipe with five guys on you. Watch James Worthy. That was a walk. Got by with it and then goes inside, gets fouled on the push by Gozer. Worthy will be at the line. He is tremendously strong. And the last 16 games, he's been hitting 64% of his shots, and they weren't all the layups. Jim, that last move by Worthy was a walk. You've got to put the ball down before that second foot. Uh, well, you can't have that second foot up in the air as he had right there. So he got by with a quick one. If he has a part of his game that's not really top echelon, it's here the free throw line, but that motion looked pretty good. Nothing wrong with those two. No, sir. That's a two-point lead. North Carolina, three-point lead. North Carolina breaks out again, 11 to 8. And we'll be back with more ACC basketball after these messages from your local station.
conclude, McDonald's will present a plaque to the outstanding player from each team as selected by Billy and myself. In addition, McDonald's is pleased to make a contribution of $1,500 to the member institutions on an approved plan of the ACC. Got a hurry on the pressure. Working inside of Bradford. Step in on the left wing. Almost walks. You can see Bradford doesn't want to handle that ball in the open court area. All out pressure. Chris Bruss is in there. Fresh players being on the floor most of the time for Dean Smith's uh, Tar Heels. 11 to 8. Three point lead by North Carolina. But Georgia Tech has held its own. There goes Steffi banking in. Rock Steffi gets his second basket. It's down to one again. 11 25 to go on the half. You can see what Steffi does with to a smaller player. He just shoots that jumper right over the top of them. There goes Jimmy Braddock. Good shooting touch. Braddock on the perimeter, and it's back up to three for the North Carolina lead. 13-10 off the 11-minute mark of the first half. They well, want to get Michael Jordan and Jimmy Black back in the lineup, replacing Buzz Peterson and Jim Braddock. It will be interesting to watch the substitutions uh, in this tournament, particularly in the first round, because we have four teams that are prohibitive favorites, and their coaches have to be thinking about tomorrow, whereas you got four clubs that say, hey, we got to win this one today, and to see how often that the coaches try to use their players to keep them rested on the clubs that are favorites. Lee goes up, picked up now by Brost. Here's goes and breaks away from him. Georgia Tech is not taking the jump shot except for Stuffy. They're looking for a better percentage. Give and go. Take it away by Brost. Nice job by Brust and excellent defense by James Worthy who cut off the passing lane. Well, the North Carolina defense is the difference right now. Tar is leading. Here goes Jordan from the corner. Tipped up by Worthy. Watch. Flies in. He's all man. 10 five point lead look at the turnovers that's the North Carolina defense that's right five to one and that was in ten minutes time they turned it over four times more so that's a lot of opportunities to score they're giving away here goes Brooks Steppy out of the corner great bad Thomas has it taken away now Doherty and a foul on the play by Bradford Morris Bradford tried to check Doherty on the outlet pass, picked up his first foul, number three against Bobby Crimmins, uh, Ramblin' Wreck. North Carolina trying to move away now. They have come from four, two points down the early minutes to lead by five at 15-10. You notice that last jumper by Steppy, uh, you had Worthy going up there in his face and threw him off just a little bit at the end. Jordan constantly looking for the shot. Jordan feeds on a knockdown, recapture. Oh, nice steal. Again by Tom Bird. Anthony Bird took it away from Jordan. A couple of young North Carolina players squaring off. 15-10. Goes the passing it inside to Steppy. Defense has been outstanding for North Carolina. Another steal. Here comes one of the on top. Oh, oh nice, Goza. By Goza. nice hustle by Goza. No substitutions yet by Georgia Tech. We may see one. Steffi spinning on the inside. Rebound ripped down by Perkins. And there's Goza with the personal foul. Steffi in badly with Perkins commits the foul. Ah, good aggressive play right here. There's Steppy trying to go over Perkins, and he does. He shows you that ability to get up there, and Sam Perkins rips it off. I thought it was a foul right off the bat, but the foul is going to be called later. Perkins with his tremendous ability to stay on the ground until he going up for the ball with good timing. Good fake by Jordan. Hanging in the air. Double pump. Six points by Michael Jordan. Now we're getting to the point where Georgia Tech has to be very careful. Down seven. Have a tendency to get a little impatient here. Try to get it all back at once. Bobby Crimmins is going to have to call for a timeout if on this occasion they don't score. Nice bounce pass. Thomas to Goza. And Goza fouled on the play. That's number three on Doherty. Yep. Third one on Doherty. He has three of the North Carolina four personal fouls on him. Excellent pass on the inside. Goes it going up strong. He had one blocked on an attempted dunk before by Worthy. That one he uh, gets fouled on. Good call. Dane Smith uh, in his 21st ACC tournament. And no one's matched his record. Nationally. You know, when you really think about it, the consistency of the performance of the University of North Carolina in basketball during his period of time, nobody's matched that type of consistency. That's true. you got to go back to Wooden and maybe the rough years in the 40s and 50s. And 
17-12. Lead back down to five. Eight minutes, 40 seconds to go in the first half. It's the opening round of the, the opening game of the 29th ACC tournament. Coming up next will be a fine tournament. It's a game, NC State and Maryland. Jimmy Black working inside the Worthy. They're really coming up the inside, Georgia Tech. Here goes Jordan Flag. He's going to have a big day today, Jim, and I think that's obvious to the fans because Georgia Tech is concentrating so much in stopping Perkins and Worthy that they're leaving him open on the weak side, and Michael Jordan just is the kind of guy that can explode offensively, so expect him to throw in a lot today. Here's Brian Howard in the first time for Georgia Tech to get Thomas open. Bounce pass is uh, taken by Black, who walked. Boy, that would have been a spectacular interception had Black been able to get rid of the ball an instant uh, quicker. Now watch Jimmy Black here. He realizes where the pass could go, so he's coming from the backside. Here he comes into the picture now. Very smart play by Jimmy Black. Georgia Tech attacking down by seven at 19-12. This will be interesting. Eight minutes to go. Are they going to go to a zone? Nope, they come right back to man for man. I think North Carolina is taking a position that if they go in the zone, Georgia Tech's going to hold the ball, and they don't want to give them that opportunity to use the clock. Nope, they'd like to get a big lead. Rest of players. Bradford feeding to Goza. Works inside. Missed the layup, and he taps it up. Locks, block. Out the pass to Jimmy Black. Black feeding to Jordan. Look out. He's on a tear right now. Michael Jordan's really getting loose. That was quite a turnaround because had Goza made the easy one, it would have kept that uh, down to a seven-point situation instead, or a five-point situation. Instead, it's up to nine. So a big four-point turnaround. 21-12. Brian Howard now is taking that point guard. That'll be a job. It'll be thoroughly tested by the pressure defense today. Brooks Steffi against Worthy. Ball is tipped by Perkins. No goal, 10. Here comes Worthy. Peterson, Worthy, duck. That's a timeouter. That's a timeouter. The lead is up to 11. And Bobby Kremlin says hold it. A timeout for Georgia Tech. North Carolina has him on the run with the score. Tar Heels 23, the Ramblin' Rock 12. And let's pause for these messages. This is only the start of it. It's a full day of basketball. Next, the Wolfpack of North Carolina State over 20 victories against surprising Maryland, the conqueror of Virginia. Then the lower bracket first round comes tonight at 7 o'clock. That will be seeing Virginia then against Clemson. Well, let's watch this one. Here's Worthy going up against Steppy. Gets over Worthy on the jumper. There's Perkins picking it off on the way up. Perkins grabs it off, and now you're going to see a sensational fast break. Watch this pass by Worthy. Excellent catch by Peterson. Back again, and Worthy goes up for the play. Excellent play. Right now, nobody makes the right-hand move of the ball any better than Worthy uh, from the forward position. You see what North Carolina did? It came out of there going into a 1-3-1 one -one zone because they realized Georgia Tech down by 9 has got to put the, down by 11 has got to put the ball up. They cannot afford to hold it outside now. Here's uh, Warren Martin is in its center, placing Worthy. Worthy. Jeff Barlow's in there. And Buzz Peterson. The only two starters are Perkins and Jimmy Black. Nice job by Barlow. They go weak side to step. Step surrounded by three players. Fine. 3 12. And you see, Georgia Tech has to go into this zone right now. They can't afford to hold the ball. And they just are wise not putting up a bad shot. Cook Step a little bit uh, frustrated here. So far, no high percentage shot can be found. Oh, a near steal. Now they go driving in Thomas. They have to pull it right back out. Nice Sam ball. Perkins had him uh, intimidated under the basket. And you've got Martin in the middle of that 1-3-1, one, one, so there's a lot of size right in the center. Perkins, of course, is 6 foot 9, maybe 10. Hey, this is a tough 1-3-1 one, one they're playing right now, Jim. Jimmy Black, knowing where he's got to be on the court, dropped all the way back from the point position to help out. Well, Perk is a chaser, so you're never going to get a good baseline shot. That's right. You've got Martin in here with big hands, taking up a lot of room. Barlow on the wing at six foot eight, taking up a lot of room. They've got almost two minutes, Bill, without getting off a shot. I think it'd be smart for Georgia Tech to take Steppy and put him on the other side over there with Peterson so he'd have a smaller man to shoot on. He's over here with Barlow. It's tough to get off the jumper. There goes Steppy penetrators. Oh, Barlow the way. That was the turnover. Goza leading the long way. There's just exactly what I was talking about. He had to go up against big fellas to get off his jumper. He'd be up against a Peterson on the other side. Slates him to at least four points. 23 to 12. 
seven point lead, the biggest for North Carolina. We're in the final four minutes of the first half right now. Low scoring game. Calls for Jordan takes control. There's Michael Jordan. Now he's staying over on what is the weak side, away from Jimmy Black, and he's open off it. Perkins follows. Tipped up down there. Worthy. I mean, uh, Jordan. Well, I think it was worthy. Wasn't Jordan, it? No, Jordan. Jordan? Sneaking from the side. He's a great leaper. 12 points by Jordan. Georgia Tech in some serious trouble now. 13-point lead. There's a kick on the ball. No foul, just a violation. Now this fella spent a lot of time this week in the infirmary. Looks all right today. Look at that tour tournament record. 38 and 18, almost 68% by Dean Smith. Here's Buzz Peterson, and Lee Goza also is going to get a rest for Georgia Tech. Now they really have a small team on the floor now. I think Brooks Tech may be the tallest player. Howard is out there along with Bird. I don't think they're concerned anymore about uh, the size for rebounds. They've got to get some people out there and shoot. Now you can see where Steppy is. He's on the other side of the oh, court except worthy. for one thing. The man to man. <laughs> it's man to man defense. Dean Smith crossed him up. They'd like to get down low, perhaps, to Thomas, who's the guy by Buzz Peterson, but there is turnover number 10. I guess Georgia Tech, with less than four minutes to go in the half, North Carolina leads by 13 points. And we'll be back with more ACC basketball after these messages. At halftime, we'll have an inside look at an ACC university and our Pepsi-Cola fast break flashback featuring great moments in the ACC tournament history. The Yellow Jacket, I haven't seen many of those, but uh, they'll see a lot of future ones. But boy, they have been some great time. There's the lineup today. State Maryland next tonight. Virginia gets Clemson. Wake Forest takes on Duke. And then the semifinals tomorrow afternoon, the championship Sunday. Now, Georgia Tech really a problem down here in the defensive end, Jim, with such a small team out there. Look for Worthy and Jordan and uh, Perkins to get any missed shots that go up there. Georgia Tech extremely small in that zone. And they're playing they right over the on the inside. They get a foul here on Bird. They can lob it about any time they want that's to. That's right. They're going to go right over the top of the zone with that team on the floor. And that's, you know, that's not falling Bobby Grimmins. He's playing matter. against people with much better ball players. Goes has two uh, personal fouls. Might have been getting a little bit tired off the pressure that he had faced and needed a rest. Jordan was looking for the lob right there on the inbounds pass. Now they screened for Perkins, and the lob was there for a moment. Jump shot's going to be there, too. There it is. Braddock. Jimmy Braddock hits his second one from the perimeter. It's 27 to 12. A lead now steadily growing up to 15 points for North Carolina. Nation's number one ranked team this week. Bobby Crimmins kind of just leaned back in his chair after that jump shot because it's he's got to give up something, and he's given up the jump shot, but North Carolina's hitting it. That foul will be on Michael Jordan, who's been an offensive whirlwind this far. Of course, Bobby Cremins, I understand, is working on what may be an outstanding recruiting year, Bill. Well, he's certainly not ever going to be faulted for the lack of desire and the lack of hard work, and it's just a matter of getting his program on solid ground. Here comes Morris Bradford has to clear it out. Peterson doing a nice job defensively. All right, North Carolina is forcing passes under pressure. This is uh, covering everybody on the floor. They are really overplaying because they know that Georgia Tech doesn't have an inside game, so they're forcing them on every pass. Thomas just gets it up over the fingertips. Uh, Perkins will score. Put that up left-handed. 27 and 14. They made him go to his left the whole first half, so he has the left hand warm, that's for sure. There it is again. Perkins going right over the top, goes down. Sticks. Here comes Steppy on Braddock. Look out. Look, Steppy. Oh, he's like a runaway car with an open court. Now, what's happening right now? North Carolina trying to lob the ball, but uh, as small as Georgia Tech is, they're cutting under, and it's not, not fouling wise but they're just so much smaller inside. 12 straight, 20 win seasons for that man in the corner, Dean Smith. That's an incredible record also. Braddock runs in and is fouled by Brian Howard. First foul on number 20 for Georgia Tech. Brian Howard, a great little athlete in the Washington, D.C. area. Here you see Howard going in under Braddock. Braddock going up. Got Howard right got a piece of the hand. ball and got a piece of the arm. Less than two minutes remaining in the first half. 11-point lead by North Carolina, 27-16. They've been up as much as uh, 
15. That's going to be on Howard, too. And, and the reason for the foul is the fact that Howard tried to prevent Worthy from making any move at all. Now, a man has the right for position defensively, but he also can't prevent the offensive man from making a move. And Howard just was riding Worthy right out of there. I see Brooks Steppy sort of uh, shaking his head a little in frustration. Steppy worked out with the Georgia Tech team here last uh, night, and uh, all he had for North Carolina were just words of praise as a team. He was reminded, uh, Billy, that overtime loss they had to Maryland. And no reflection on that Maryland team, but Brooks said, yeah, but this is a different team we're playing tomorrow. <laughs> never forget the day he had here a few years ago against that Maryland club. Sensational performance. That was a 17 foul against North Carolina. That's why we're going to the bonus. Here's uh, James Worthy, already over a thousand points for his career. A junior. Some reports circulating about uh, perhaps going to a professional career after this, but uh, Worthy's had no comment on that. Perkins with a rebound. Georgia Tech, they're just so small on that baseline in that 1-2-2 two, two zone that North Carolina can just tap the ball out. Goes has been out now for about five or six minutes. Parkins double team still gets free. Tipped up and in by Jordan. They're playing volleyball with it up there. Sam Perkins not getting off the snide in regard to those little shots inside. Expect him to start hitting soon. Jordan only six foot five, plays like he's six foot eight. 30, 16, 14 point lead. He Double team on Howard. Now, nah, Worthy gonna stop that jump shot. Now, Worthy now taking Steppy. Worthy and Perkins have rolled to alternate on Steppy. Now, Bird down inside, forces up over to Worthy. And the rebound and the personal fouls called, I think, against Boris Bradford. Number two on him. Now, this is a tough situation for Georgia Tech because they've got such a small team out there. And there's Perkins just holding his ground. Not going to allow anything. Not coming down on the shot. Now you've got Jordan and Worthy and Perkins down inside to grab the rebound. It's going to be Perkins that got it and got fouled. Sam, in the last meeting of Georgia Tech, held Steffi to just 12 points. He guaranteed most of the game, that one. And was just named with his teammate, uh, James Worthy, to the U.S. Basketball Riders All-American team. Sam's not getting off the mark, and there's another tap out. And just nothing that Georgia Tech can do about it. Less than a minute to go in the first half. North Carolina now has taken command of this game against Georgia Tech. Here in the first half, 30-16. Georgia Tech led early on. Stayed even for about the first five minutes. Black looking for the lob, Jim. He's looking for the lob to Sam Perkins. Goes is aware of it now. Might wait down for one shot if they desire. And Georgia Tech's packed back in there, giving the perimeter passing routes. 20 seconds to go on the half. 30-16. Yep, that's one. what you're going to do. Now take one and go to the locker room. 12 seconds and counting. Michael Jordan is seven for nine, and remember he missed his first shot, so he's made, what, seven out of the last eight, and here's another chance. There goes Jordan, and with one second to go, Howard has it down, no time to get down floor, and North Carolina with an impressive 30 to 16 lead after early stuttering here against determined and fired up Georgia Tech. With the Tar Heels now almost doubling the score, and that's the end of the first half with the count North Carolina 30, Georgia Tech 16. We'll be back with our recap of the first half after these messages. Georgia Tech had an early moment of glory here, staying even with North Carolina for about five minutes, but since then, the Tar Heels, I guess, started from the defense, just overpowered them. Well, Jim, they had an excellent game plan. Bobby Crimmins know, knew what it was going to be. They came out, they overplay every particular passing lane. Georgia Tech certainly undermanned, and when they had to go to that smaller lineup, school was out. And, of course, North Carolina showed no signs of being overconfident. They seemed to be... Uh, uh, very steady and never never got away from their plan. An excellent workmanlike job and a well-designed plan. A bunch of guys that are very mature, Jim. They've been here before, and this would be a tough team to beat. Jordan, of course, had a spectacular first half, but watch James Worthy here. This is certainly all America caliber play. 
Well, here's Worthy going up for the block. It goes over the top of Worthy, but there's Sam Perkins in behind him. Now we're going to see a fast break here that was a classic. Look at Worthy in the open court area for man 6'9". That was a sensational catch by Peterson, although it didn't look difficult. And who's on the end of it but James Worthy? A pretty good play. Worthy goes in for two of North Carolina's total of 30 points point lead. Now in just a moment, we'll have a special look at our halftime activities after this message. A look at the first half statistics. The turnovers didn't turn out to be that big a factor, but look at the rebounds and the shooting percentages for North Carolina. Well, Jim, particularly in the last uh, six or seven minutes there, when Georgia Tech had to go to that very small team, the rebounds got totally out of sight. Georgia Tech never did get off the mark shooting too well. North Carolina, Nine percent for the Tar Heels, the first half, only 37. Credit that mostly to North Carolina's scrambling, harassing defense, and the Tar Heels lead by 14. And we'll have the start of the second half between North Carolina and Georgia Tech after these messages. Spurl Coliseum, the opening round of the 29th annual Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. There's the first half story. 30-16, North Carolina by 14 points, sparked by their awesome uh, pressure defense against this underdog Georgia Tech team. Uh, won three games this season in the conference, the most ever. Jim, of course, uh, Bobby Crimmins going back out there with some size in the second half. Goes of back in. He came back in with the last few minutes in the in the end of the first half. One of the things I think is interesting in that first half, Dean Smith got 25 percent of the playing tour, two for two. Uh, they got in a lot of flames to keep those starters fresh for the long haul. There goes James Worthy right off the opening tab of the second half. Worthy comes through with his ninth point of the game, and it's 32-16. That's the biggest lead of the game for the Tar Heels. A lot of pressing, double teaming. A lot of trapping. Worthy still on Steppy. Worthy goes back. That was intended to be a pass. Brooks stepped right lead by Thomas, but pulled out by Perkins. North Carolina's got the ball in the 50, a 16-point lead. Key thing if you're North Carolina right now, this ball game is theirs. It's not to get sloppy with your play. There goes a drive by Doherty. Let's see if he gets the basket. Ours, uh, Paul Hausman turned around to ask his fellow official. Well, that'll be number good. four. Basket counts. Here goes Doherty. Puts it up. Gets fouled. Stepping. So he's going to have to sit a while. Braddock comes in for him. Hausman turned and asked Joe Forty, did he get the ball? Which is well, good officiating, Jim. certainly is. 34-16, 18-point lead. Biggest for the Tar Heels. George Tech still trying to register here in the second half. That'll be Bird, who's been a great shooter as a sub, has been able to hit here in the starting role. It's really amazing to watch both Perkins and Worthy play Brooks Steppy because they don't give him that outside jumper that he needs to get off the track. Perkins bad. now a little bit thrown too hard, perhaps, with Jimmy Black because Perkins was wide open and his man pinned behind him. 34-18. Billy, the last time these two teams played here on this floor was a regular season game two years ago, and Georgia Tech almost upset North Carolina. I remember it. They were on that foul line with a chance. Remember that, Jim? Brooks Steppe runs into the defense. Burr gets off a southern shot, two in a row. Bradley Burr. Jimmy Black trying to help out other people, and of course, in man getting a chance to get free. Four straight points for Georgia Tech, but the lead is still 14 for North Carolina. Bobby Crimmins going back into that zone that he had in the beginning of the first half, packing it way back inside, figuring maybe North Carolina won't be quite so hot from the outside. Jimmy Braddock replaced Doherty after Doherty's fourth foul. Down low, Worthy. Worthy spins to his right hand. Tipped up once by Jordan, and then a reach in foul by Perkins. Sam Perkins, second personal foul. He's only a sophomore. He's been so great, though, in his two years. You think he's been around for a long time, but Dean Smith brought him in last year, and he was quite a prize. Sam was only one for four, though, in the first half, and he hasn't gotten untracked off. Don't be surprised to see Dean Smith try to get him wound up here in his second half. Good man for man pressure, and a sticking man to man defense for North Carolina. 34 20. Second game today matches North Carolina State and Maryland. I'm kind of surprised that Georgia Tech doesn't set some screens for Brooks Steffi so that he would get him away from James Worthy. Overplay, Stilberberg dropped to Perkins. Right hand. 
Sam Perkins on the one-hand stop, but that was a great steal by Jimmy Black. And you notice Jimmy Black used a little a defensive shading there, and he wouldn't allow Goza to come over on Perkins. There's a reach-in foul by Black. He tried to make it two in a row. A gambling cost him this time. That's the third team foul against the Tar Heels. A nice oh. pass by Dean Smith. There. Yep, Dean. <laughs> The number one seed has never lost the first round game of this tournament. And it looks like it's going to continue here for another year. It'll be the 29th straight time. Of course, a few years. Someone oh, oh, oh. stepping wide open. Sam Perkins mistimed that by one step, and that was the difference. That's what Sam pleaded, but it was a little swifter pass that he anticipated, and just a misjudgment on his part. 36-22. Jimmy Black makes up for it the other end, hitting from the perimeter for his first basket. No defense against that for Georgia Tech. If you're going to back in there, you're going to give up that jump shot, and if they make them, it's all over. Jump switch double team. Brooks stepping. One stepping to there goes Thomas. Left hand. Do you believe that one? That is really making something up in midair. Well, that's a sensational shot, but of course the game is no longer down to one where Georgia Tech's occupying that ball a lot. So as long as they put it up, North Carolina in a position just to keep pulling away. Well, that would have been a high percentage shot at all. They're going to take those all day. You forget it. 38-24. Perkins underneath. Left hand. He's not. Gordon Carroll alive. Down by Steppy. Steppy coming back against two defensive players. Now looks over the court. 16 minutes to go in the game. Steppy baseline. Perkins with a rebound for North Carolina. Sam doing the job on the boards, though, isn't he? It sure is. What were his numbers in the first half? First half, he had seven rebounds. Seven. What a game. Jordan again. Meantime, Jordan continues to pour in the points. At 16, he keeps the heel fans roaring here with a 16-point lead, 40-24. And North Carolina goes back in his zone. They're going to force Georgia Tech now to put the ball up with this kind of a working margin. And they'll just about dominate the boards. Steppy from the outside. Jordan and Perkins both were there to get the loose ball. Bobby Crimmins just grabs his head right there. Now that Georgia Tech's putting up the ball, Jim, they're almost in a defenseless position. North Carolina sailing alone. They took over the number one spot when Virginia was beaten. There goes Jordan again. Rebound, Steppy ripped Good it off. Out. Steppy's got Brad from the left. Brad by Black. Oh, what a play. Jimmy Black. Steppy in traffic walks. Or is he foul? He was pushed by Jimmy Braddock. Another fine play by Jimmy Black. This one on the defense. Are you talking about Bradford's a guy, 6'3", that can get up in the air. Jimmy Black, no. Guard, small guy in the court, sensational block. That's nothing but ball with 15 minutes to go in the game. Bobby Kermit says, what are you going to do? And with the score, North Carolina 40, Georgia Tech 24. We'll have more ACC basketball action. A winner of eight ACC championships, Dean Smith of North Carolina. And that, of course, is a record for any coach here. It's 15 uh, Atlantic Coast Conference. That he'd, uh, he'd been to the final, been into the study for the semifinals. Jimmy Black leads the Atlantic Coast Conference in assists on an average, at least 6.3. There's that zone defense. Barlow back in the ballgame. He did an excellent job on the wing in the first half. There he goes, the baseline. Has to clear it to Steppy. Steppy penetrating. He can jump stop to come up with that jump shot as well as anybody I've seen in a long time. 40-26. He'll be in some All-Star games when he fell. And this def he's definitely an NBA prospect. He's got the body for it. He's an aggressive player, good size, likes to play the game. Bench getting in there now. Steppy just guilty of pushing. He doesn't like for aggressive play. That's Buzz Peterson, 22, replacing Braddock. Bobby Cremins wants to talk to Brooks Steppy. Uh, Steppy was pushing off with Chris Brust, and Brust is going to be replaced now by, Jen, by James Worthy. Yes. Nobody got in the one and one in the first half either, did they? No, that was the first personal foul by Steppy. No, North Carolina committed to five team fouls this first half, and I uh, think Georgia Tech, well, yes, North Carolina did get to the bonus, remember? Worthy had a bonus shot and missed it. 40-26, 14-point lead by the Tar Heels. If they win, it'll be 25 victories this year, and that'll mark 10 times for Dean Smith. Only two other coaches have done that. Wooden and Rutt. Peterson.
Dickerson in the ballgame. Now, this guy right here is destined for stardom. He was an outstanding high school player. If he hadn't been sick and hurt early in the year, I'd expect him to have played a much bigger role in his freshman year. But before he graduates, Buzz Peterson will be an outstanding player for North Carolina. There he is. There were three very early commit the, uh, players who committed to North Carolina last year. Buzz Peterson, Michael Jordan, and Linwood Robinson. Robinson also has had some injuries. So they committed very early on. Three out of same backcourt players. Of course, Jordan can play anywhere. Here comes Peterson. That's a uh, rebound for the ball. Oh! He's having a good game. 42-26, Jeff Barlow joined the North Carolina team as a walk-on last year. And he's been a member ever since. Something interesting, Mike, Michael Jordan just went by Dean Smith and I'm ready to go back in. He has to come out before, so I guess he has the right to ask to go back in. He's waiting to report. Man for man defense for the Tar Heels are not letting Georgia Tech breathe here underneath. Bradford broken up by Peterson. Great job by Barlow and Peterson. Barlow is having an excellent defensive ball game so far. Phil, well, this is an intricate defensive uh, systems that uh, Dean Smith employs here. And is that difficult for a freshman coming out of high school the first year to learn? Well, I think not only the defensive and offensive structures, but North Carolina has a style. Uh, the way they practice, the way they play, uh, what you're expected to do. And I think a guy has an awful lot to learn when he joins a North Carolina team. It's kind of like... Uh, any any coach that has a system that's been so successful you have to learn the system before you get to play in it that was the first foul against buzz peterson and three point possibility for steffi now who's at 12 points his average is 18 a game and he may wind up it looks like as the runner-up to vince taylor in the acc scoring race 42 29 north carolina has a commanding lead with over 13 minutes remaining in the game next game will be maryland and north carolina state that could be a good one Surrounding that zone, a lot of shots available from the outside. Michael Jordan trying to find a hole. He's got one now, Peterson to go through. There goes Sam Perkins. Sam hasn't been hitting the shot so far. He was the MVP last year, right? Yep. He's not untracked offensively yet. Rookie of the year last year. Steffi cutting her quicks and cleared back outside with a lot of bounds. It'll be Georgia Tech's ball. Steffi missed last year because of academic problems. Two years ago here, played in Georgia Tech's initial year in the ACC. Took Maryland into overtime in their very first tournament game ever after joining the Atlantic Coast. So now Steffi, that's a walk. A good year. That's a walk, as you say, Bill. That was just like the move that uh, James Worthy made earlier. You've got to get that foot down. You've got to have a pivot foot established, and you can't use two of them. Isn't that a pleasant face? Yep. Bobby Kerman is quite a guy. Now 11-7 in turnovers. Georgia Tech giving up uh, the margin of four. It's stayed at that margin now since about midway in the first half. 42-29, North Carolina lobbed up Perkins. He may have pushed off. He did. Push off against Steffi. Perkins third foul. Has not been one of Sam's uh, normal vintage games. You know, I think that Sam Perkins would rather play against big people. What's happening right now is Sam kind of annoyed with things. I think what's happening now, he's in there against smaller guys, and he's not able to maneuver as well as he normally would, and he's not playing over their heads, but Sam's uh, extremely quick. I think he'd rather play against the... Uh, well, I put a Samson out there, and he'd like that. That's right. Now that turnover for Georgia Tech, number 12. With 12 minutes to go, there's Perkins. North Carolina takes over the ball, leaving by 13 points. <laughs> Fans trying to go ahead and keep North Carolina active right now. Peters. The zone defense back to enjoy. There goes Jordan. With Peterson taps in the air, and Worthy will bring it down, and Peterson winds up with a loose ball. Still loose. Goes and drops it. Sam's got it. Nice. There's Jordan has foul. Oh, he was creamed. Great quick reaction by North Carolina. And good defensive play and hustle by Georgia Tech. You know, these kids are not giving up in this battle. Ball gets away from Goza here. His own man steals it. Perkins gets it. Now watch this beautiful pass inside. Good teamwork by Sam Perkins. And then everybody from Georgia Tech gets around Michael Jordan. Goza looked like he's coming down one of those slicky slides backwards after uh, losing his balance. Going for his 17th point, Jordan. A little short. He was in the infirmary for two and a half days with tonsillitis, or at least an abscess tonsil, and had 
had not practiced since last Saturday's game, but he's shown no ill effects, except maybe the free throw line. Michael Jordan a little short on the first one, the second one he wanted to make sure he got up there and came up a little flat on the shot. 13-point lead for the Tar Heels. They got their eyes set on another bid for national championships so this Virginia. And we'll see what fate has in store for the rest of this tournament. This is just the first game of North Carolina shining brightly. Thomas inside. Blocked by Worthy. Excellent block. A fantastic defensive play. Thomas showing a lot of quickness, but you go inside and have Worthy and Perkins waiting on you. You know they're going to smack some away. Well, now, Georgia Tech was yelling gold in the first, but it looked like a good block. Look at where they popped in the air, came down, and he's fouled. There's a push from behind, and I think it'll be on Bird. Nope. Worthy has that ability, Jim, to catch that ball, and while he's in the air, to make believe he's either going to pass it. Now watch the fake inside. It holds all the defense. You see Steppy actually backed away. He thought it was going to be a pass. Then Worthy has that ability to come down and put it back up nice and solid. Two shots to James Worthy. Doherty back in the game with four fouls on him. Georgia Tech probably had all they wanted this guy. He had 12 out of 14, I guess, from in Atlanta. Today he scored nine points. And they're going for double figures here. He has averaged almost 16 points a game against Georgia Tech in his career. Almost a point over his average. And this is a pair. That's four straight free throws that uh, North Carolina's missed. Yep. Two by Jordan, two by Worthy. 42-29. Fans getting a little uh, uneasy, and I'm sure Dean Smith is too, because his team was playing so well. Out of the corner goes Bird. Six points this half by Anthony Bird. He's been in double figures for three straight games. And he's going to take a time. And Dean Smith wants a timeout. His team suddenly playing a little bit on the ragged edge after a poised first half. And so with a score, North Carolina 42, Georgia Tech 31. Let's pause for these messages. Right here with uh, North Carolina leading by 11. Here's a question. Uh, was this a good block? An excellent play. Inside, James Worthy gets a piece of it waiting in there. Dean Smith... Jim, and he sensed the same thing that we did. In the last six weeks, James Worthy has played the best basketball of his career. That's pretty good. But I think Dean Smith sensed the same thing that everybody else did, probably way ahead of us. But his team just playing a little ragged, letting the game go by, and they didn't have that same intensity on the offensive end of the court they had in the first half. Let's see how they react here with Tim game with the midway point of the second half. North Carolina still leading by 11, but they once led by 18. They'd like to get Sam Parkins on track here. Get him get a couple of baskets before this game is over. They don't want to have a, an outstanding player in the draft. First unit is out there. Uh, Doherty playing with four fouls. The Tar Heels are taking no chances of any kind of a freak turnaround here in the second half. They have slowed down the tempo now with Georgia Tech still in the zone. They're looking for the easy one. Love to get it inside to Perkins or Worthy. Georgia Tech matching up pretty good in that zone. Goes is a clever player in there. There's a push up A. <laughs> Sam Perkins says, thank goodness. I've been banged around all day. And Steppy giving him a little heat over there. They're smiling. Sam saying, give me some room in here. I said Gozo was pushing Sam around <laughs> for an early game. It'd be Sam hard was... to get mad at a face like that, wouldn't it? Well, since Sam stopped and pointed his finger, Lee said, now Lee, don't do that. 42-31. <laughs> 11-point lead, North Carolina on top. Georgia Tech got off to a good start. He'll in the early minutes. Still even after about five minutes, but then North Carolina suddenly pulled away and led by 14 and a half by as much as 18 here in the second half, and then suddenly got into a little stretch of poor play. You can see that North Carolina wants Georgia Tech defense is staying right packed back in there. All of their players are within 12 feet of that basket. And North Carolina obviously would like to have them pull out a little bit to open up some holes for Worthy and Perkins. So North Carolina just refusing to take the perimeter shot. 8.56 remaining. Clock is rolling. North Carolina suddenly has called a halt to their all-out blitzkrieg. And they're looking for something better. There's how the shooting has gone so far. Well, Georgia Tech picking up a little bit. North Carolina going down a little bit here in the second half. And the whole thing is, Dean Smith said, probably just run your pattern. If they don't come out of that zone or at least spread the zone a little bit, let the clock tick on off. And Bobby Crimmins has a tough job now. He's got to make a decision. 
He yeah. can't sit back in here and say, well, we'll just lose it low. We're going to have to go after him. Coming up to the eight-minute mark left in the game, 11-point lead by North Carolina. Crimmins up off the bench right now. He's going to stitch in the defense. Let's see if North Carolina kids recognize it. And then now they're man-to-man. -man. Yeah, here, here you go. Now they'll see something. Dean Smith just signaled. North Carolina team waiting for this move. After the man for man, you'll see the tempo press pick up. Now they're really spreading the court here. Get the open middle in there for Perkins and Worthy. This is not the four corners now. What they're going to do is offensively try to break somebody off. Jimmy Black. Just like realize that North Carolina's going to take that real long shot. Now let's see where Steffi's playing. Steffi trying to protect down inside. He's got Worthy. He's trying to protect inside, so to give North Carolina, of course, an outlet pass all the time. This is not an out-and-out -out, uh, pressure tactic. Foul of There's Michael no Jordan. Foul by uh, Jordan. Crimmins wants to time out and get him restructured. Second one on Jordan. This is Bobby Crimmins' first ACC tournament as a coach, but he told me yesterday he has not missed a tournament since he killed as a player at South Carolina. Okay, here's how we see things here with Georgia Tech 31, North Carolina leading with 42, and let's pause. All right, the winner of this game goes to the semifinals to play either North Carolina State or Maryland. That's the matchup of our game two coming up right after this one. The North Carolina State Wolfpack licking their wounds a little bit after losing to Wake Forest. But boy, is Maryland on the high coming here. Well, you can just see their crowd starting to get ready now. And they had one of the great days in uh, college basketball this year, last Saturday when they beat Virginia. The fans were out of sight. It was an excellent game. A lot of emotion involved in it. And uh, well played on the part of the University of Maryland. Here's the man-to-man -man now, picking up much tighter. North Carolina going to go for a layup here. Looking for the back door. They got everybody high and spread. 42-31, North Carolina. And pull the defense away from the basket. Georgia Tech staying with the man for man. They're not really overplaying. They're trying to cut off the lane. There's the back door, the black, and he's fouled on the play by Bird. That's what North Carolina wanted. Dean Smith said, in no sense, go on and give him Georgia Tech a chance to get back in this game. Jimmy pointed out to me during the timeout. We'll see the replay right here. Perkins hitting the backdoor pass. Jimmy Black going, using the left hand, and gets fouled. Boy, look how he stretched Bill to protect the ball. An excellent move. You pointed out to me that Georgia Tech had outscored North Carolina 7-2. Carolina had him down 40-24, and then to build it all the way to 42-31. So Dean Smith wisely called a timeout, said let's get in a different kind of game. Jimmy Black will be on the line for two shots. He's going to wind up number two. There's Bird going out of the game. That was his uh, fifth personal foul. So Bird leaves with the eight points. That ends his double-figure string at three, but he'll be back next year as a junior. That breaks that uh, four in a row for North Carolina. They had missed four straight free throws. Jimmy Black up to 80% as a free throw shooter, which is extremely critical because he goes to the line a lot at the end of the game. Well, that's the 14th in a row he's made, Bill, personally, over the last few games. 44-31. 13-point lead by North Carolina. North Carolina back in a funny-looking zone. Let's see if they're boxing one on Steppy. Offensive foul. Yep, they're trying to set a screen for Steppy down in the baseline. I believe North Carolina went boxing one on Steppy with Jimmy Black. Foul is on George Thomas. Lewis. That's his first time, first foul on him. And now they're going to say it was uh, not the man with the ball who fouled. So that means North Carolina gets the one and one. That's right. It was the black. It was the foul line uh, trying to set a screen for Brooks Steppy coming off. And Thomas had uh, set an illegal screen on Jimmy Black. All right, going for 15 in a row. Jimmy Black. 44 31. Well, the string ends there for Black. But North Carolina leads by 13 out of only six and a half minutes to go in the game. Now it's back, back to man to man now, Jim. Ryan Howard back here with Georgia Tech. Pass almost too low for Steppy. Here goes Steffi, driving hard on Doherty. Rebound pulled down by Thomas, who drives in, but he was fouled before he got there. The foul on Black, second one on him. You can see why Thomas was the leading rebounder at the guard position. He went up there among the trees and still ripped it off. And he fought for seven, leads the bonus line. Here's Steffi going up on Doherty, takes the jumper, bounds off. Watch Thomas. The kid has a nose for the ball. 
pulls it off and gets fouled. It's only six foot three. This the front end. James Riley has the rebound for North Carolina. Where they look. Points to go to. He's He's annoyed, wasn't he? <laughs> he was annoyed. He got touched a little bit there. Take man for man. Rick Steffi has uh, Worthy and Goza has Perkins. The two big inside power man for North Carolina. Jordan being guarded by Thomas. Good Tech doing a nice job here. They're not just giving up and conceding these backdoor plays. Trying for the backdoor. There's a foul on Thomas. Second one on him. Brock shows now 5.46 to go. North Carolina now seems like they just listen salt it away. We'll turn our attention to either State or Maryland as soon as this one's over. That'll be North Carolina State versus Maryland. Game two coming up right after this one here. The ACC tournament. That looked like a much better release by Michael Jordan. It's always chewing that chewing gum, and as we pointed out over the course of the year, he never has bitten that tongue off, but he sure gives it a lot of chances. Well, he keeps that wagging. There it is. Let's <laughs> 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 break. Uh, Jordan ends his little ground at the line. 6:31, North Carolina. Tar Heels going for win number 25. Just had their best regular season. At least they're tied the best. 24 to Black playing Steppy. Yeah. Now, see, it's a box in one. Actually, a diamond in one. Uh, Jordan went high to tip the ball to the outside. That'll mean it'll be Georgia Tech's ball. Some people might uh, wonder what we're talking about. That means that one guy is playing a, a player like Steppy man to man, and the other four defensive players for North Carolina play in a four man zone. Here's Bradford, about a 17th footer. Steffi taps it up once, and then uh, Perkins wraps it up for North Carolina. You notice North Carolina has not been looking for the fast break here in the second half. They might have had a semi-break available there, because Georgia Tech is sending everybody to the boards to try to rebound. Well, I think it's not a bad idea, Bill. Kind of pace yourself. There's a lot for Worthy, broken up by Thomas Black and Healy. Steffi back to Brian Howard. Howard pulls up. Jimmy Black. Up again. And here's the break. Black, uh, worthy, worthy. I think it would have been a close game where they would have tried to take Bradford right there. Well, I think Bradford would have tried to go ahead and nail him. One of the things it does, though, Jim, it keeps that other team from sending five men to the board. If they know you're not going to break on them, they don't worry about the long pass going the other way. Here's the spread delay again by North Carolina. Four and a half minutes to go on the game. The Tar Heels lead by 15. Oh, that's 33 31. That's Bradford. Bradford was holding Doherty all the way that time. I expect Dean Smith to start going to that bench a little bit now. 425. That's all that remains. North Carolina lost once uh, to Wake Forest, once to Virginia. They avenged both those defeats during the regular season. Matt Doherty on the line. Doherty, who is a little tentative at one stage of the season, has been more of a take charge guy down the stretch, especially in the perimeter shooting. Per Perkins pushed off. Perkins gets the basket and he's fouled on the play. He got away with that one. He pushed Brooks Steppy to get the rebound. Got away with it. He's going to have a chance for a three point play. I think they say it's Goza. Let's see if Goza back. Well, we're going to see there's Doherty with the shot. We don't get a chance to see the push off, but you can see what Steffi ended up under the little reach in right before the shot. So Perkins now was has only that was only his sixth point of the game. He's well over his average of 14.5. Sam was something like two for eight so far in his ball game from the floor. That made him what three for nine? Right, but there's the 18 point lead again, Bill. That equals the biggest lead of the game, 49-31. You think you're doing a pretty good job holding North Carolina down, and you're not. And there's that diamond in one with Jimmy Black on Brooks Steppy. Huh? Good drive by Thomas. Blocked by Worthy. Perkins on a tight rope. Keeps it a play with exactly four minutes to go in the game. 49-31. Here's Dean Smith going to that bench now. No sense getting anybody hurt here. The starters have had a good workout. North Carolina really hasn't exerted itself that much. Here goes Perkins. Will not drop. Has not been a big shooting game for Sam Perkins, but wow, what a job on the board. Makes him something. That's a turnover. Thomas off his knee. Hit by Worthy. It's off Thomas's knee out of bounds to North Carolina. Worthy will be replaced by Chris Bust. And we come down with just three minutes and 33 seconds to go. With a score, North Carolina 49, Georgia Tech 31. And let's pause for these messages. We've got 
lots more action coming immediately after this game. North Carolina State versus Maryland. Then tonight, second seeded Virginia, third in the country against the Clemson Tigers at South 20 against Duke. That's always been a great rivalry. So we'll have a full day of action. We're actually just underway with our very first game here. 49-31 North Carolina leads. Spread out now. Brush took Worthy out of there. Four starters still in the ballgame. Doherty side to Perkins. Rosa does a good job keeping him away. He's done an excellent job on Perkins today, Jim, when he had to go man to man. There's Brush. Great pass by Jordan, and Brush is fouled on the play by Thomas. Although their stats won't be that high or that impressive, the bench from North Carolina today has played flawless basketball. No errors that I can remember particularly, but great play and using good hands. Nice dish, uses the left hand, puts it up, gets fouled with a chance for a three-pointer. Well, that was the old New York combination to Chris Bruss, Bruss from Long Island. And Perkins on step. Thomas bounce pass. And Bradford just didn't reach for it. Anderson. That will go all starters, I believe. Yep, Warren Martin is going to replace Perkins. So the starting team will sit down for North Carolina with 2.45 to go and a 20-point lead. Our Hills now can turn their attention to the semifinals tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. Two minutes and 35 seconds remaining. There's Warren Martin, a seven-footer, maybe the first pure seven-footer North Carolina's ever had. Bad pass. That's good. Oh, That's Peterson good play. Saved it back over the line. Look at the ball. Oh, no. I think that's a bad call there. Foul on Goza. You know, sometimes you get a reputation yeah, exactly. being a rugged player, and they called every time. It looked like Goza had a good chance to reach in there. He had possession of the ball. Tough break for the big well, guy. Of course, Goza's runnings with Ralph Sampson have become almost legend here in the ACC, but uh, you're right, Bill. North Carolina dodged the bullet a few times. Dude, Martin, the first time I've seen him shoot a free throw shot. Russ gets a piece. Yeah. Jimmy Brown controls. Barlow cross court. Russ open. Russ. Hey, these subs have had some ball game. Well, this is Russ final ACC tournament. He's a senior, 53-31, 22 point lead. And there's a kick by the North Carolina defense. Two minutes, six seconds to go. Well, it'll be another notable victory here for Dean Smith, coaching in North Carolina. Brooks Steffi from the perimeter. Bradford goes up, and he's fouled by Buzz Peterson. That's good rebounding technique by Bradford that time. He cleaned out the area, went straight up in the air. He's got a wide set of shoulders on him, so he takes up quite a bit of room. But at six foot three, he has problems with the James Worthy Worthies of this world. That's exactly right. They call him the Georgia Tech's incredible shrinking man. Recruited at 6'6". Six, 6'7". Six. Six, <laughs> <I think. laughs> this was the first game. Actually, him at 6'3". Yep. Foul on the play against Chris Brust of North Carolina. Number one on Brust. Cecil Axon now comes in. That was Warren Martin, 54. A freshman seven-footer. Pretty highly recruited last year out of the state of Virginia. Axon has replaced Buzz Peterson. Well, the only players who have not played so far are Bramley and uh, Makinen and Linwood Robinson. Robinson's a guy that uh, may surprise Jim. You know, as a junior in high school, he was considered as the second coming of Phil Ford and had that tough knee injury, which really slowed him down. He, he did, counts a lot on his uh, blazing speed. But after sitting out this year, don't see, be surprised if he doesn't make some moves in years to come. Goes on a tip in by Thomas. Boy, Thomas can really go up on the board. 53-33, North Carolina. Formality here playing the last minute and 40 seconds. Nice defense by Thomas. Another victory for now the nation's number one ranked team. And there's a Martin got caught in the switches down there trying to sell a screen. Martin gets his first foul. Another one and one. Dean Smith. Billy in the great years date off rough had 10 years. He won 25. And of course, John Wooden in 11 years. This is going to be the 10th uh, team for Smith to win 25 games. That's great practice. 
It is, and I think he's got an opportunity to set another record in regard to 20 win seasons. He's got an opportunity to be the first guy maybe ever. Well, he's tied Tarkanian. That's right, and next year he's got an opportunity with the club he's got coming back to break that record. Uh, well, of course, Tarkanian's record to spring's already been stopped, That's so right. he can't do anything about that. Ball is not coming for Cozy. Now, Adolph Rupp had more than either one, but he had that one year where his team didn't participate, so it's one of those asterisk-type rules. That's right. Didn't have it in a row. Both ends by Goza. Eight points for him. 53-36. Minute and a half to go in the game. North Carolina headed for victory. This Warren Martin catches the ball pretty well, doesn't he, for a big fella? Yep, seven-footer. I think you'll hear about him in a year, maybe two, but two at the most. He's going to be a player. A little opening the foul to Lyon. Stu Lyon. Well, Stu was a key figure this team a year ago, but he's been really good. Now Bobby Crimmins, of course, this year went for the more, the better athlete on the squad so he could get some defensive pressure. Now our McDonald's Outstanding Player Awards go to Brooks Seppi of Georgia Tech. Again, he led the Yellow Jackets, even though they were beaten. And to Michael Jordan of North Carolina, 18-point scoring performance and all-round play again today. McDonald's will present a plaque to each of these players and then make a contribution of $15 to the member institutions of the ACC. That's an approved plan of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Congratulations to Brooks and to Michael. Axum with both ends of the one and one, 55-36. Now Timo Makinen comes in. He's uh, originally from Finland, 6 11, played in Western North Carolina in high school. Also in is John Brownlee, whose father, I think, played with Dean Smith at Kansas, didn't he? That's uh, too bad that Dean has all of those connections, you know. <laughs> uh, he just signed another one for next year. He's the kind of guy you want as a teammate. Wow. Father of Steve Hout ran the pass, had to come back. He looks a little like Phil Ford, uh, Billy. Uh, he has great quickness. Axum. And a walk by Barlow. Shuffled his feet. Now less than a minute to go. 52 seconds. And it's Jesse coming out. Our uh, partner will be having some interviews with after the game with some of the players and coaches. Brooks Steppy going out. Now that's quite a career. Yeah. 14 points for Brooks Steppy. He's MVP. I'm appreciative of uh, salute from the crowd here. Bradford shot off. Ben out to Robinson. Took his high off the ball and still recovered. That's his pick. Ben, look at Robinson. Like a blur he is. Knocking an inside. And he's fouled on the play by Stu Lyon. Mackinnon is one of those fellas that you try to put weight on, and it seems like the more he eats, the more weights he lifts, the thinner he becomes. You see the pass inside. Nice pass by Brownlee. Mackinnon gets it. Now, here's why strength is important in basketball. That ball was touched, but a power player like a Worthy would just take the ball, the players, and everything, and put it up there and go for a three-pointer. Mackinnon, without that strength, has to settle be just for the foul shots. George Thomas chalked him up another rebound. The top rebounding guard in the ACC, Bradford, on the fast break. And he's on rebound for the day. Maurice Bradford for Georgia Tech finally scores with only 20 seconds left in the game. That was his first point. I think Mackinnon sets a record in the world Guinness Book of Records as the tallest yodeler. <laughs> what do you think from Finland? Finland, all right. A collision out there by Lyon and Brownlee. I think they'll charge Brownlee with a foul. First one on him. From Fort Worth, Texas. He looks like a Texan a little bit. That long legged jump, six foot ten. So North Carolina will continue. Number one in the country now in both major polls. They start the season number one after they just went over Kentucky, which you saw, Billy. That was uh, quite a ball game, and we've said it many times in our broadcast. The month of December for North Carolina was one of the finest months that any collegiate team has ever had. The competition that they took on, the, the Tulsas, the Southern Cows, the Kentucky, so they were just outstanding during that month. And the Robinson has one second, five of first. Oh! the buzzer. Axum did not account it. That's Dean Smith, the fifth victory this year. Now 25 and 2. The tenth time that his team up. Well, that's the end of the game. The final score, 55-39 North Carolina. We'll be back with a final wrap-up after these messages from your local station.